For many years, God had told the people of Israel, through the words of the prophets, that someday He would send a child of peace who would lead them to the kingdom of heaven. This child, they said, would be one anointed by the Spirit of God and was to be the King and Savior of the entire world. Isaiah, one of those prophets, foretold His coming. The glory of God shall be revealed, and all people shall witness it together. The, for the mouth of God has spoken it. Behold, a maiden shall bring forth a son whom she shall call Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Many people remembered the words of the prophets and waited anxiously for God to fulfill his promise that would deliver them from their suffering and forgive the sins of the world. Now, 2,000 years ago, in a small village called Nazareth, in the part of Israel known as Galilee, there lived a maiden named Mary. She was a poor, simple young woman, but her love of God was strong and pure. She had always praised God's greatness and thanked Him for what little she had. Her circumstances may have been humble, but her faith in God was one and unending. One day, as Mary prayed in her home, a bright light suddenly filled the room. She looked up to see the angel Gabriel. Mary was frightened and trembled in the presence of the angel. Rejoice, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is pleased with you. Behold, you shall give birth to a son, the Messiah, the world's Savior. He will be a great king, and his kingdom will have no end. But how can this be? I am only a simple girl of Nazareth. How can I give birth to a great king? It is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and cause the child to be conceived. You shall name him Jesus, and he will be the Son of God. Mary bowed her head because she now understood that Gabriel was telling her the will of God. She was overwhelmed with happiness that God had chosen her to be the mother of the Messiah. How could it be that of all the women in the world, God had picked her? I live to serve the Lord. Let it be as you have said. Gabriel was gone as suddenly as he had arrived. Mary was awestruck, but her heart filled with joy when she pondered what the angel had said. I have to tell someone about what just happened. I must visit Elizabeth. Elizabeth was an older woman who had grieved for most of her life because she was unable to have a child. And she, too, was a good woman who lived by the word of God. Now, to her surprise, she was going to have a baby. It was a miracle, and Elizabeth praised God. When she came to the gate of Elizabeth's house, Mary called out, Elizabeth, I have good news to tell you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For the moment your greeting reached my ear, my baby leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken by the Lord should be fulfilled. My heart exults in the Lord, for he has looked upon me, his holy servant. Holy is your name. His love reaches from age to age. He has come to help Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My child may be a miracle, but yours will be the Lord and Savior of us all. You may stay here, cousin, if you want to. Mary did stay, and for the next three months. Now, Mary had been promised to a carpenter named Joseph, and it was time to begin their life together. He was to be her husband. I must leave you, cousin, so I can be with Joseph. Goodbye, Mary, and have a safe journey home. When Mary came to Joseph, he was distressed to learn she was already with child. Mary hadn't told him of the angel's visit and that it was the Messiah she carried. 
Joseph cared deeply for Mary, but he gave the matter much thought, and he privately decided to break off their engagement. That night, as he lay sleeping, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife, for the child she carries is from God. You must name the child Jesus, because he is to be the Savior who leads all to God. When Joseph awoke, he obeyed God's will, though he did not completely understand it. He took Mary as his wife and cared for her tenderly. Now, it happened that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the emperor of Rome, that the entire world should be taxed. Every man in Israel was required to go to the town of his birth to be counted. Mary was now heavy with child, and the difficult trip might endanger her and the unborn baby. But Joseph and Mary had faith in God's plan for them. So they set out for the place of Joseph's birth, the village of Bethlehem. The journey was long and hard. Down from the highlands of Galilee they traveled, along the valley of the River Jordan, then up the steep hills past the city of Jerusalem on their way to Bethlehem. Many travelers streamed into Bethlehem that night as Mary and Joseph entered the gates of town. When they sought warmth and comfort in the inn, they were told there was no room. How can this be? Oh, we have traveled so long and are so very tired. How can it be that there isn't a single room for us in all of Bethlehem? I need a place to lie down and rest. They asked everywhere, but the answer was always the same. Desperate. Joseph knocked on the door of the last inn. Who's there? Please, sir. We have come all the way from Nazareth, and my wife is soon to give birth. I ask only shelter for her. Every room is full. Some of the travelers have doubled up and are sleeping on the floor. We have no other place to go. Well, we do have a stable out back. It has four walls and a roof. Thank you, sir. We will rest there for the night. I'll send someone out with blankets and something to eat and drink. Bless you, sir. That night, there were shepherds in the fields close to Bethlehem, taking turn looking after their flocks. They huddled around a fire for heat. Oh, it's so cold out. Maybe we should get some blankets. Look, over there. What is that light in the sky? Who goes there? Do not be afraid, shepherds, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy for all people. For this night in Bethlehem, a child is born, the Messiah, the Lord. He lies wrapped in swaddling clothes in a humble manger. Go to him, for he is your true king and promised savior of the world. And suddenly, there was a great gathering of angels in the sky, singing, Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest heaven. Peace, peace on earth to all people of good will. When the angels left, the night was again silent. Only the stars shone in the sky. The shepherds looked at one another in astonishment. For so many years before them, the people had waited for a savior. Did we dream this? 
wolves were just poor shepherds. How could it be that the Lord has trust us with this news? We should go to Bethlehem, as the angel said, and see the child before the Lord has made known to us. So the shepherds hurried to the town and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. They looked at him lying in the manger and they knew. It is God's holy child. An angel appeared to us. He told us that he is the Messiah. Yes, it's true. We saw it with our own eyes. The sky opened up and there was a great beautiful light and a host of angels singing his praise. I can tell this child will be our shepherd. Joseph remembered the angel of the Lord who came to him in the dream. I have seen and heard the most miraculous things. Mary treasured all the things the shepherd said and pondered them in her heart. When daylight came, the shepherds went through the town of Bethlehem on the way to their flocks, proclaiming the glory of God and the birth of the Messiah to all who would listen. The king has been born! The king is born! The Messiah is here! The king has been born! The king is born! The king is born! The king is born! The king is born.
far, far away from Bethlehem, in a land in the east, three wise men, Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, studied the stars. They believed the stars told signs from God. On the night that Jesus was born, the wise men saw a new star in the sky. What can this star mean? It is an omen. It means something very important. I believe a king has been born who comes to the people of Israel. He carries God's message. We must find him. Day after day, they traveled. Through the valley of the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, over the sands of the hot, scorching desert, past Damascus and along the river Jordan. At last, they came to Jerusalem in the region known as Judea, where Herod was king. They approached the gates of Herod's palace and asked to see the king. The wise men were shown in and presented to Herod. Tell us, where is the new king who has just been born? King, what new king? I am the king and I know of no other. I assure you that no new king has been born. What lies led you to believe this, you foolish magi? A new star appeared in the heavens. It is a sign from God that the promised king and savior has been born. What do you mean? A new star? A new king? Yes, it is a child of God who was born. We have come to give thanks and worship. Herod was filled with jealousy and fear. If it were true that another king was born, then it would mean that Herod would have to take measures to preserve his power from this rival. Scholars, who is this new king they speak of? It has been told by the prophets that God himself would send a king to Israel and that he would be born in Bethlehem. It's quite true what the wise men say. Herod was taken aback by the scholar's words. I must do something about this new king. You were dismissed. Tell me, what date did you last see this new star? Um, let me see. Two weeks past? Maybe three weeks ago? Very good. Go and search diligently for the young child at Bethlehem. When you have found him, bring me word, so that I too may come and worship him. The wise men rejoiced, because now they knew where to find the child. When they left the palace, there above them, in the sky, was a star they had seen rising in the east. They followed the star to Bethlehem, until it stopped over the place where the child was. The sight of the star over the stable filled them with joy. Dressed in their finery and jewels and their cloaks of silk, the wise men stepped down from their camels. They entered the stable and saw Mary with the baby Jesus. The wise men were overcome instantly with wonder. A great peace filled their souls. They fell to their knees to worship him. We have brought gifts for our Savior. Myrrh, because he is man. Frankincense, because he is God.
and gold because he is king. Truly, we have found the anointed one of God. His glory and love shall save the people of the world.